We've learned how to use vPython to model freefall motion under the influence of gravity. We are now ready to study one of the richest problems in introductory physics, projectile motion. Projectile motion problems usually involve launching an object called the projectile with an initial velocity. We could give this velocity in terms of x and y components, but it's usually more convenient to specify the launch speed and the launch angle. After all, when you throw a basketball, you usually think in terms of how fast you're going to throw it and how steep or shallow you're going to toss it. We can calculate the x and y components of this initial velocity fairly easily using the cosine and sine functions. When we launch a projectile, we'll be interested in a few quantities. First, we might look at the range of the trajectory. The range is the total horizontal distance from beginning to end. Second, we might look at the maximum height of the trajectory. The maximum height is the vertical distance between the starting point and the peak of the trajectory. Finally, we might look at the total time the projectile stays in the air before it strikes the ground. Let's examine how we can determine these quantities from our code. To give our marker its initial velocity, we can now enter the launch speed and launch angle and then use the cosine and sine functions to obtain the x and y components. Our acceleration vector will have zero x component and a y component of negative 9.8. When we run the code, we see the projectile's trajectory form a parabola. The position graph matches this behavior with the x component of the position moving steadily at a constant velocity and the y component reaching a maximum and then turning around. The velocity graph also matches this behavior, with the x component of the velocity a constant and the y component steadily decreasing, changing from positive to negative. We can also estimate our three quantities of interest from these graphs. To find the range, we see that the projectile starts at x equals negative 5 and ends at x equals positive 4, giving us a total horizontal distance of 9. To find the maximum height, we see that the projectile starts at y equals negative 3 and reaches a peak just above negative 2, giving us a height of at least 1. Let's see if we can get a better value for the height in a moment. Finally, to find the total time, we see that the projectile starts moving at time 0 and ends at time 1, giving us a total time of 1. Now, these estimates are pretty rough, and they won't get any better as we try out different values of the launch speed and angle. For example, if we change the launch angle to 45 degrees, we can find it difficult to narrow down the final values of time and x, let alone the maximum value of y. So let's make some additions to our code to tell us more accurate values. Finding out the final time is pretty straightforward. Our time starts at zero and increases by an amount time step with each run of the loop. So after finishing the loop, we can tell the computer to print the last value of time for us. To get the range, we can access the current value of the projectile's position and the initial value of the projectile's position. Taking the difference between these two values will tell us the range. Now finding out the maximum height is a bit trickier. Since the projectile reaches its peak in the middle of the animation instead of at the end, we have to be a bit clever. It's as if we want to compare each value of the projectile's height and keep only the highest. Fortunately, Python has a built-in function called max that can do just that. When you use the max function, you enter two or more variables that you want the function to compare. The function will then pick out the largest of the values listed. It's like looking for a world record. So in this command, we compare the record holding value of y with the current value of y. If the current value of y is higher, it will replace the record holder. If the current value of y is lower, the record holder will retain its standing. We just need to set an initial value for the record holder before the loop begins. Now, after the loop finishes, we can print the difference between the maximum y value and the original y value to show us the maximum height. You have now learned how to model projectile motion in vPython. The activities in the description below will help you learn more about this behavior.